Hello! Many of us dreamed becoming internet stars. This guy couldn't even imagine anything like this. He didn't even know the internet existed until recently. That's because after returning from the Vietnam War, Frank's life had virtually stopped for a few decades. But soon everything is going to change dramatically. Frank grew up in a very ordinary family helping his mother and father on a farm in California his whole childhood. But the humble life didn't upset him. On the contrary, he learned to enjoy the simple things. For example, his relationship with his girlfriend Lindsay, whom he dreamed of marrying. Alas, the young couple's plans were interrupted by the Vietnam War. Frank promised to return from the war as soon as possible, but his service at the front lasted longer than expected. The boy had spent a total of seven years in a foreign land, a whole year of which he was held prisoner by the enemy. He was tortured and interrogated, but still managed to get free. Sometime later, Frank had to go back to his homeland because of an injury. After leaving the hospital, Frank ran headlong to his girlfriend's house. There, he was in for a big surprise. Mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, can I make this once? Frank realized that since he couldn't expect any happiness in his personal life anytime soon, he could at least build a career. At first, he applied to the police academy that he hoped to be admitted to because of his combat experience, but was rejected because of his serious injury. So the guy went on interviews, where he received rejection after rejection due to his lack of higher education. In the end, poor Frank had to make it on his own. He started selling hot dogs on the street. Before he knew it, 40 years passed. But one day, everything changes. That day, Frank is taking his usual route on a bus. When two skinheads enter the vehicle, they begin to harass a black passenger, demanding that he make room for them. He refuses. The skinheads are about to beat the old man up, but Frank intervenes. At first, he just wants to scare the guys off and says he's not going to fight them, but they seem to be asking for a beating. The passengers on the bus applaud Frank. He doesn't know yet that one of them has filmed the whole scene on camera. The video goes viral, and Frank is nicknamed Badass. His face is painted on walls and printed on t-shirts. Cops give Frank a ride home like he's their best friend, and reporters vie with each other to have an interview with the viral internet star. And best of all, his mother is so proud of him. But the euphoria does not last long. Soon, Frank's mother dies and leaves him a large house and her beloved dog as inheritance. Now Frank has one and only one loved one left in his life. His best friend Klondike, also a war veteran. Klondike helps Frank settle into his new home. They discuss their military past and Klondike tearfully thanks his friend for saving his life on the battlefield a long time ago. The men dream that now their lives will finally go uphill, since Frank has suddenly become a local celebrity. Then Klondike asks his friend to put a mysterious flash drive in his safe, a device that old-fashioned Frank sees for the first time, and goes off to get cigarettes. As he leaves the store, Klondike encounters two thugs in a car. They demand to hand over the flash drive, and when Klondike pretends not to know what they're talking about, they put a gun to his head. The man knocks the assailants to the ground and is about to leave when... <laughs> Later, Frank is called in for body identification. He asks the cops to do everything in their power to catch his best friend's killers, and goes to get a drink. Outside the house, Frank is met by his neighbor. She is sympathetic about his loss and tells him that her brother was recently murdered in almost the same place as Klondike. The woman complains that the local police do nothing to solve crimes like these, and a little later, Frank tells all this to his cop acquaintance. The cop promises that the police will do everything they can. A little later, however, Frank is watching television and sees that a white boy has recently been murdered in their town, and the murderer was apprehended immediately. The next day, the man goes to the police station and resents the lack of progress in the case. Again, he is told that the officers are supposedly busy working day and night. Get Frank finally realizes that he can't expect any help from the police, so he goes to the crime scene himself. There, he finds three pieces of evidence, a fired bullet case, a chain, and a necklace with a picture of a girl. Afterwards, Frank goes to the only gun store in town to find out what kind of gun the bullet was fired from. The local consultant tells him that these shells are only used in specific weapons for the military and special agents, and he doesn't have them in his stock. But the salesman recognizes the girl from the necklace he found and says that she is the wife of some black guy, Terrence who lives a few blocks away. The consultant gives Frank directions on how to get to his house. The door is opened by an exhausted girl with a baby. From their conversation, Frank realizes that Terrence hasn't been home to his wife and three children for a long time, and she hasn't seen her husband in weeks. Lastly, 
The girl says that her friends recently spotted Terrence on a basketball court and asked Frank to give him a good talking from her. Frank goes to the basketball court and asks the locals where he can find Terrence. They refuse to tell him anything. That's when the trademark badass punch comes into play. The tone of Terrence's pals change. They reveal the coordinates of a certain Ronaldo who may have information. At the address, Frank finds a strange guy in a Holy Father suit. It turns out to be Ronaldo's neighbor who mistook Frank for a thief. When he learns the truth, he tells him which bar Ronaldo hangs out at every morning. In the evening, Frank witnesses an unpleasant scene. His neighbors, a young couple, quarrel loudly on the doorstep. The man leaves and his wife Amber is left alone with her son, Martin. Frank invites the girl to his place to wash the wound left on her face by her violent spouse. The three of them have a nice chat and spend the time with pleasure. Maybe one day I'll make you something to eat. I'd love that. The next morning, Frank goes looking for Ronaldo at the bar. The guys on the first floor recognize him and make it clear that they are not happy to see him. Then Frank has to show his fighting skills again and finally gets to the second floor where Ronaldo is. When asked about Terrence, Ronaldo quickly pulls out a knife and says he's not going to tell him anything. But after the badass sticks Ronaldo's head out into the street, he quickly gives up. He says that Terrence has been dating a certain girl who does massages at a salon nearby. Satisfied, Frank leaves. On his way home, the man is stopped by his cop friend. He says that rumors about Frank's adventures are already spreading all over the town. What's more, the chief almost issued a warrant for his arrest, and the officer was only able to stop him at the very last moment. Frank answers that he can't stand around and watch the cop's colleagues sit back and do nothing about the death of his best friend. The officer replies that it's not Frank's job, and he won't help him anymore if he continues. I don't want your help. Frank walks into his house and sees that everything inside has been vandalized. Before he has time to look around, a huge guy grabs him from behind. The stranger demands that he hand over the flash drive immediately, but Frank pretends not to know what he's talking about and throws the uninvited guest out the window. Next, Frank goes to his neighbor Martin and asks to see the contents of the flash drive given to him by Klondike. It contains a map of the town, some building permits and contacts. Frank does not understand what his friend might have to do with this but remembers the strange nickname, Panther. Later, Frank goes to the Asian massage salon, which Ronaldo told him about, and makes an appointment with Tatiana. She wonders why he requested a session with her, and then Frank says he's looking for Terrence. The girl freaks out. I, I just realized I'm double booked. Diane will be here in a few minutes to finish you off. After Tatiana is finished with her shift, Frank follows her straight to her house. But the moment he tries to climb in through the window, he's spotted by a neighbor. He doesn't believe Frank's fairy tales about being Tatiana's boyfriend and demands him to come closer. After recognizing the stranger as the badass from the TV, he immediately changes his attitude. Not only does he let Frank go, but he also reminds him that his girlfriend doesn't actually close the back door. Frank goes up to the second floor and catches Tatiana and Terrence in bed. The man tries to shoot the stranger, but Frank quickly pins him down and leads him into the kitchen. There, he shoves Terrence's hand into the garbage shredder and demands to know who killed Klondike and why. Terrence yells in pain and quickly surrenders. He says that Klondike was killed by his partner Sebastian, and they were both just doing what they were told. At first, Terrence refuses to say who exactly is giving the orders. But after another torture with the shredder, he does give up Panther's name and his hiding place. By the way, your wife's got a message for you. Say go yourself. Upon returning home, Frank sees the couple next door arguing again, only this time the man is even more aggressive than before. Frank intervenes and asks him to leave Amber alone. When the husband begins to suspect his wife is cheating with the neighbor, Frank twists his arm in no time and sends him away. Happy Amber throws herself into Frank's arms and tells him that he looks tired. She suggests that he get some sleep and then come over for dinner, especially since her son Martin is spending the night at a friend's house. And Frank himself, of course, has no time for sleep. Excited, he makes long preparations for dinner, puts on his best suit and buys flowers. Amber is fascinated by his new look, and they have a nice dinner in a sweet-smelling garden. Frank is delighted with the homemade food, and the woman says she is very happy to finally cook for someone who appreciates it. She confesses to Frank that when she married, her spouse was very different, and now he has forever changed. Later, they sit on the terrace and chat, but when the long-awaited time for a kiss finally arrives... What's up, shorties? It turns out that Martin's friend is grounded and the sleepover is cancelled, but Frank and Amber are not upset. 
The three of them have a wonderful time together, and at the end of the evening, Frank offers them to stay at his place while the front door of their house is broken. The big day has arrived for the badass. First, he goes to his cop friend to hand him the flash drive. The guy says that there's important information on it that got Klondike killed, and asks his friend to take care of the dog if anything happens to him. Then Frank goes to church and confesses to a priest as he's about to commit a serious sin. And finally in the evening, Frank goes to the warehouse whose location Terrence had revealed to him. At first, the thug guards refuse to let him in, but when Panther Kingpin hears a familiar voice, he steps out from the shadows. But it looks like you've bitten off a little bit more than you can chew. Frank accuses Panther of killing his best friend. The mobster replies that he was only punishing Klondike for stealing something very important to him. He demands the flash drive from Frank, and when he again pretends not to know anything about it, the criminals tie Frank up and put him in an electric chair. But Frank can no longer be intimidated by torture. He has been through it many years ago, so he holds strong and does not give anything away. Panther finally loses his patience, orders his subordinates to continue what they have started and leaves. The mafioso somehow guesses that Frank's girlfriend is waiting for him at home, and now he's going to pay her a visit. But what he doesn't know is that Frank already has a plan in his head and a box of matches in his pocket. What the? There is an explosion and Frank is released from his shackles. He grabs Panther, who is now left without a car, and fights him hand to hand. The mobster manages to wound him with a weapon he found on the floor and escapes. Not far from the warehouse, Panther stops a bus, kicks the driver out, and drives away. Frank sees this and gets on a different bus too, which the other driver gives up voluntarily because he recognized the badass. After nearly getting into an accident, Frank tails Panther, but Panther manages to get away. The mobster decides to provoke our hero. He drives straight at his opponent, head to head, and at the very last moment, Frank can't stand it and takes a turn. His bus falls over. Panther, in turn, crashes into the train ahead. Miraculously, they both survive. The mobster runs away and Frank hobbles after him. Along the way, he runs into the same skinheads who made him famous. They hate the man for making them a laughingstock for others, and dream of getting revenge and making a new video in which they are the victors. But it doesn't work out so well. Panther, meanwhile, is already inside the house and meets Amber, armed with a knife. But he has no time to even touch her, because Frank shows up on the doorstep and pushes the outlaw into the wall. They end up in the street, and Frank falls to the ground. A few more moments and Panther would beat him to a pulp if it wasn't for Amber who jumps onto the thug's back. She gives her lover time to get up, and Frank finally defeats the enemy. The neighbors applaud him, and Amber asks him to let her treat his wounds, as he once did for her. Wow, I've never had a woman rescue me before. <laughs> the next day, a story is aired on local TV. The badass is back, only this time he didn't just beat up random skinheads but solved one of the biggest corruption cases in town, involving Mayor Williams and one of the most dangerous gang organizations in the country. Frank was made an honorary police officer for his heroic deed, and he, Amber, and Martin now live happily together. You know, I think I actually found the best day of my life. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Can a person solve so many problems alone? Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that more awesome retellings come out as often as possible.